Sky Sports News has also discovered under the Freedom of Information Act that £343,000 has been spent maintaining the Olympic Stadium in four months alone. That's hundreds of thousands of pounds of taxpayers' money on a stadium that's barely been used. Well, Natalie, earlier on this week, we learned through sources that it was going to cost £200 million, pounds, a staggering number, isn't it, to convert the stadium. But what we didn't know was how much of this was going to come from the taxpayers. Turns out it's nearly all of it. The only money that doesn't come from the taxpayers is the £50 million that comes from West Ham. And that is part of their 99-year deal to lease the stadium. His trial is receiving international media attention, but Oscar Pistorius has remained composed until now. Amy Lewis joins us now on Sky Sports News. Amy, what has he had to say? Well, Jim, arguably it was the most significant day so far of the trial as Oscar Pistorius started giving his testimony. He spoke directly to Reva Steenkamp, his girlfriend's family, in particular her mother, June Steenkamp, who was in the public gallery, and apologised for the pain that he had caused them. Good afternoon. Sources have been telling us that Nicola Cortesi has handed in his written resignation and is planning on leaving the club. Well, our reporter Amy Lewis broke the news that Poet had been sacked. What's led to Poet's dismissal? Well, the club never actually made it clear what this alleged breach of contract is. However, I understand from my sources that actually he made it clear to the club weeks before the end of the season that he intended to leave the club. Well, our reporter Amy Lewis got first news of that deal for us earlier today and she's here now with more on the rest of the transfer business uh, waiting to happen. No pressure on you to deliver <laughs> <laughs> once again, Amy, but we are hearing, of course, uh, the exodus from Southampton it is set to continue. What can you tell us about that? Yes, Dejan Lovren, let's start with him. A couple of days ago on Wednesday, we told you that he should be leaving Southampton by the end of the week and joining Liverpool. Today, we understand that he has agreed, that deal has been agreed for around about £20 million and his medical will take place with Liverpool over the weekend. So that should be announced by the end of the week. Breaking news here is that the FA Council has rejected the proposal put forward by the football club. So that means that the club will stay called Hull City and won't change its name to Hull Tigers. He's controlled F1 for four decades at every race across the globe. Bernie Eccleston is there, surrounded by sports stars and celebrity. But his and F1's future could be decided far from the paddock in the less glamorous setting of London's Royal Courts of Justice. Eccleston has been accused of making a £27 million bribe to German banker Gerhard Krakowski when F1 was sold in 2006. Are you here to smoke up tree or see, sir? You know, that's exactly the point. You don't support anybody. I'm doing what I want to do, you do what you want to do, right? Yeah, exactly. There is a lot of anger in Coventry and it's dividing the fans. We're supposed to, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be out. It brings players closer to their fans, but social media also opens them to obscene and offensive attacks there is a growing trend of online abuse. Jason Brown was racially insulted and threatened on Twitter when he was playing for Wales against Scotland. He claims it hasn't been taken seriously. The police have been uh, well, it's extremely disappointing. They've been a bit dismissive of the matter, like it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, they're there to, to gauge the law, but they haven't done. And I, I me personally, I thought, would I have been best at just dealing, it, dealing with it myself and taking the law into my own hands? Fans often think that what they're saying is anonymous, but machines send the messages of hate into the public domain. We've discovered that in the last year alone, at least 44 cases of social media abuse directed at professional footballers in England and Scotland have been reported to police. Clubs told us hundreds more go unreported because players don't speak out. The abuse is often racist, anti-Semitic and threatening, sent by fans as young as 13. We need to get into the minds of the individuals that are doing it, whether they're doing it as 
because they want to get a retweet or they want to uh, get fame amongst their friends and, and say that, you know, I, I abuse so and so. Uh, we, we need to get into the minds of them. And until we can get into the minds of them and their culture, then we're never going to stop this. Tottenham keeper Brad Friedel has 123,000 followers on Twitter. He, like other top players, receives adulation from fans, but there are also cases of vitriolic abuse. Sometimes people say something that it, some things that are so idiotic or so untrue that you have to that you have to respond. It's just the way that you respond. You have to be very careful. Again, not bringing the club into disrepute because. I think I've said it many times in interviews, we are employees of the football clubs and these football clubs will be here and around a lot longer than any of us players will be around. There have been prosecutions. A man who sent racist tweets to former Rangers players Carl Bartley and Morris Edu has been jailed for six months. A student was jailed for 56 days for racially offensive comments about Fabrice Mwamba, sent hours after the Bolton player suffered a cardiac arrest during a match. For the CPS say it's impossible to know how many are punished because of the way the data is recorded. Is it that there are now so many cases that crimes are going unpunished? No, because I think um, if people, we've got the evidence and it's the public interest and we will take that into account and we will make sure we prosecute. Um, cases that have racial elements are really important as well because that's one of the cases, one of the factors that we'll take into account when looking at whether it's in the public interest to prosecute. Former Liverpool player Stan Collymore claims Twitter isn't doing enough to combat illegal messages after he was allegedly racially abused and sent death threats. The site declined our offer to be interviewed but said it took action against illegal or rule-breaking content. The FA and clubs act if a player comes to them after being abused, but none of this would have prevented Jason's case, which, one year on, the Scottish prosecutor says remains under consideration. Amy Lewis, Sky Sports. Sir Ben Ainsley has proved himself as king of the waves and now he has royal backing. The Duchess of Cambridge is supporting his ambitious venture to launch a British America's Cup team. It was a huge honour to have the Duchess with us today. She's a passionate sailor and of course passionate about Britain and British sport so um, we, uh, we're very grateful for her support. The comeback of 2013 is complete. America's Cup will stay in America. Ainsley and Oracle Team USA achieved the unthinkable in San Francisco last year, overhauling an 8-1 deficit to beat Team New Zealand in the decider. Now he wants to do the same with a British team. The America's Cup started in British waters in 1851 and the American team took it off and, and we've never seen it since. So it's the last great sporting challenge I think we have in this country. So we're, we're pretty passionate to put that straight. Ainsley's success inspired the royal couple to try their hand at sailing in New Zealand in April. So Ben Ainsley has gained more than just royal support. He has put together a team of some of the biggest names in sailing and business. It is a sport that relies on big pockets. £80 million is needed. So far they've raised 40%. Now the team wants Adrian Newey, the most successful F1 designer in a generation, to join them and they need more funding. We've got really the, the, the basics that we need of the team. We've got some more recruits to bring on, but we've got the core, if you like. We've got a, a group of private individuals who've put the money forward to get so far. The next America's Cup isn't until 2017, and we still don't know where it will be. But Ainsley and his team are edging ever closer to putting Britain at the heart of it. Amy Lewis, Sky Sports. Godolphin is one of the world's largest racing and breeding operations of thoroughbred horses. Now it's at the centre of racing's most serious doping scandal. Eleven horses have tested positive for banned substances, including unbeaten filly Certify in the Blue, who won't be allowed to run in the 1,000 guineas. Trainer Mahmoud al Zaruni admits he's made a catastrophic mistake, but claims he didn't realise he was in breach of rules because the horses were out of competition. The damage has already been done. The implications for Godolphin are simply that their image takes an absolutely massive hit. I mean, Godolphin is a hugely respected operation worldwide. It has poured unimaginable fortunes into horse racing right around the world. The sport is not too far short of an exaggeration to say it's been propped up by Godolphin. 
The Dubai ruler Sheikh Mohammed owns Godolphin and appointed Al Zaruni three years ago. Almost a quarter of the 45 horses that were sampled tested positive to anabolic steroids, the most serious of all potentially performance enhancing drugs. Their use is subject to a blanket ban in racing yards in most countries, whether or not a horse is due to contest a race in the near future. In this case, or what appears to be in this case, um, they're being given for performance enhancement and that really means that they're used in training, during training, um, either as a paste given by mouth or tablets given by mouth or as an injection into the muscle and that has the effect of um, enabling the horse to put on increased muscle mass and gain muscle strength. There's only been one other occasion when a horse has tested positive for a performance enhancing drug. Trainer Howard Johnson was banned for four years in 2011. Today the sport has been brought into disrepute once more. It's like the favourite for the 100 metres at the Olympic Games being tested positive two weeks before the race. It's exactly the same. Are other trainers on it? This is what, obviously, I don't want to find out. But if it's true, then we do want to find out. So this is now beginning to cast a shadow. Last year, Al Saruni was fined £2,000 after two horses tested positive for banned painkillers. He will now attend a British Horse Racing Authority disciplinary inquiry. Amy Lewis, Sky Sports. As an Olympian and Paralympian, Oscar Pistorius is used to nerve-wracking moments in front of the camera, but nothing like this. His hearing has been billed as the trial of the century, and to add to the drama, this is the first case to be televised in a South African court. Inside, the tension mounted as the trial was delayed by 90 minutes as the court waited for an interpreter to arrive. Finally, we heard the accused enter his plea for the first time. Do you understand the charge? I do, my lady. How do you plead? Uh, not guilty, my lady. Pistorius has been accused of intentionally shooting dead his 29-year-old model girlfriend, Reva Steenkamp, on Valentine's Day last year. But through his lawyer, he claimed it was a case of mistaken identity. The allegation that I wanted to shoot, brackets, or kill, close brackets, Reva, cannot be further from the truth. Whilst I admit that I inflicted the fatal gunshot wounds to Reva, this occurrence was indeed an accident in that I had mistakenly believed that an intruder or intruders had entered my home and posed an imminent threat to Reva and me. Then the prosecution outlined its case, claiming Pistorius murdered Steenkamp after the couple had had a disagreement. We argue that the accused version during the bail application and today is cannot be reasonably possibly true, should be rejected, and as the only inference from the circumstantial evidence would be that the accused shot and killed the deceased with direct intent to kill. The state has listed 107 witnesses who could be called during the three-week trial. First up was Pistorius's neighbour, who, in gripping detail, described being woken by screams. She didn't want to be identified and spoke through an interpreter. But just before the gunshots, it was blood curdling. It was something that leaves you cold. It's something you can't portray in the court. It's, you, you can't explain it. You just know that woman's life was really threatened. Oscar Pistorius, known as the Blade Runner, is the most famous Paralympian of all time. It will be a judge, not a jury, who will decide if he's guilty of premeditated murder. If convicted, he could face life in South Africa's notoriously unforgiving prisons. Amy Lewis, Sky Sports.